always look forward to the next part of our pageant. While we have met all of the young ladies who are semi-finalists, we haven't had the opportunity to get to know them, hence the interview competition. The young ladies don't know the questions they'll be asked, and nobody knows what their answers will be, so be ready for anything. Our audience at home will see the average score each contestant receives in this part of the competition, but those scores will not be seen by our panel of judges, our contestants, or the audience here in the theater. Each young lady has been advised that should she decide she needs or wants one, a translator is available for her from Berlitz, official interpreter for the Miss Universe pageant. Now, our first young woman in the Miss Universe interview competition is you, Miss New Zealand. Will you step right over here to me, please? She is Lorraine Downs. She's 19. She lives in Auckland. She's a model. And Miss New Zealand, many Americans are curious about your country. Why don't you just tell us about New Zealand? Well, New Zealand is a beautiful country. It's a very natural green country, and if you like the easy outdoor life, then you like New Zealand. And at home there in New Zealand, have you watched the Miss Universe pageant on CBS? Well, I've been watching the Miss Universe pageant since I was about eight years old, and I can't believe that I'm here now in it. <laughs> well, you are indeed. Now, you're 19, so she was three years old when I started doing the pageant. <laughs> of course, I was only 20 years old when I... S <laughs> this fellow over here says, higher, higher. <sighs> Miss New Zealand, have you enjoyed your visit to St. Louis? Oh, it's been wonderful. It's one that I'm never going to forget. And the best thing of my visit has been the people of St. Louis. They have been so friendly and made everyone feel welcome. Thank you. Nicely put. Thank you. Uh, you'll see her score. And I'll talk with Miss Italy. She is Federica Moro. She is 18. She lives in Milan. Here. And she is a high school student. And after finishing high school, what are your plans? Well, after entering the Miss Italy pageant, I had many open doors in modeling and I've been asked also to do some tryouts for actress and since I am a very curious girl maybe if something good is for me I, I get it but <clears throat> I'm interested in architecture and this is not really perfect for a, a language student but you know Italy is very full of arts and artists so maybe I'll become one of them I don't know now do you remember what you said one time in rehearsal when I asked you what you'd like to talk about yes what did you say I said about Italian food that's right and especially now this I understand moment. that there are a lot of Italians in st. Louis I bet they'd like to know what Italian I bet they'd like to know what Italian food you like could stay really here until tomorrow but I would just make a short list uh, spaghetti and pizza but real Italian pizza yes. most more than American pizza and <laughs> I what, like ravioli what, tortellini what has been your favorite American food hamburger <laughs> thank you Miss Italy she's gone American on us already score and let's talk with you Miss Singapore she is Lily Bing she's 20 years old she just completed she just completed her studies in fashion design and what is your ambition um, to own my own boutique you'd like and to sell own my own clothes yeah my own now, design I wonder uh, what comments you might make for our American audience here on on the fashions of American women what have you observed in American women dressing or what the dresses, the clothes that American women wear. Do you like them? Yeah, it's very casual. I like that in jeans and t-shirts. That's my <laughs> <best>. <laughs> what, <laughs> what have you enjoyed most in the USA? Eating strawberries. <laughs> I don't know about you judges, but I bet you just got the vote of the strawberry growers of America. Thank you, Miss Singapore. Venezuela, please. She is Paola Lugeri. She's 21 years old. She lives in Caracas. 
She attends Metropolitan University of Caracas, and although she speaks English, we'd like to have the Spanish-speaking interpreter just standing by. I'll, I'll ask you if, if she needs help. You're going to try this by yourself, aren't you? Yes, I will. Now, you're, I'll try. I'll you're try going, my best. You're going to the university. What are you studying? I'm studying business administration, and I'm very near to finish my career. And I have three more classes in my thesis, and I'll get graduated. And what would you like to do or be after you graduate? Well, in general, I will succeed in all my ambitions. And that means finish my career and be a good professional, uh, a good mother then. Mm -hmm. And now to be I'll a good try to help. Uh, How you say Como se dice? <laughs> try to help what? Your brother. Try to try help. To help. Hermano? Yeah. No, it's her <laughs> You stay out of this. <laughs> well, but if you want to be a, people, if you want, I'm, I'm only them. fooling. He's really leaving. Uh, <laughs> if you want to be a professional, that requires self-discipline. What I was leading up to, I read in your bio that mm -hmm. you were on the swimming team yes. for your country mm -hmm. in the 1976 Olympics, and that required self-discipline, didn't yes. it? Yes. Well, Very well, disciplined. Well, you were in Montreal, were you? Yes, in Montreal. Uh, I turned my 15 years old there. And, well, I would like to tell you that uh, there's been a lot of coincidence in my life. And I'll turn 15 there, and I'll be 22 here in the, on Thursday. And, and I'm very glad to pass it here in St. Louis. Thank you yeah. very much, Ms. Venezuela. Very good. At home, you see her score. Before we talk with you, Miss Ireland. She is Roberta Brown. She's 20. She lives in Londonderry. She's studying textiles and fashion. And we got off on athletics with Miss Venezuela. Now, I read about you in the sports pages, didn't I? <laughs> yes, it's not every day you get to knock over one of the world champions in the football field. Darrell Porter, I knocked him over six times. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's not the uh, athletic feat that I was referring to. You're also a runner, aren't you? Yes, I'm a long-distance marathon runner, and I've run for seven years now and in the World Cross Country Championships. If you're going to knock over Darrell Porter, it's a good idea to be able to run. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> now... I believe that uh, your chaperone told me that you would like to open a health food store, is that correct? Yes, I hope perhaps next year to open a health food restaurant combined with the craft industry in the United States. Is it true you're looking for capital to do this? That's a very subtle hint. <laughs> <laughs> no, what I was thinking is we might raise a little... How many, how many would like to invest in Miss Ireland's health food store? Just raise your... Look at this. Look, there, there are a lot of hands up and every one is attached to a young man. I think we can raise a lot of money. Thank you, Miss. Thank you. We're ready for you. Well, here she is. I turned my back on her, and she sneaked up on me. Miss Norway, right over here in this good light. I want you to look just as pretty as you are. There you are. Now, she's Karen Elizabeth Dublog, 21, just finished junior college, plans to attend the University of Oslo in the fall, and what do you want to study? I want to study English because uh, uh, I want to become a foreign diplomat because I like uh, to travel, I like to take care of people and be around people, and I like to speak English. <laughs> and you already speak how many languages? I speak uh, English and a little of German and French. Uh -huh, and you want to be a diplomat for your country? For my country, Is yes. this your first visit to the United States? No, I've been here two times before. Where have you been before? I have been in Connecticut for quite a long time, and I've been traveling to several other states. Did you get to California? Yes, I was there one month. Did you see Disneyland? No, I did not, I'm afraid. I'll go back there, so I'll get to see this. Oh, yes, you have to see Mickey Mouse. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Miss Norway. Well, you have met half of our semi-finalists. How about it, you armchair judges? Is one of them going to be the new Miss Universe? I wish that all of you at home could be up here in this balcony with me watching this wonderful live telecast with the best seat in the house. But I'm going to the excitement with a little trivia, so let me try a question on you. What did the ice cream cone, the Lewis and Clark expedition, and the reign of the next Miss Universe have in common? Time's up.
The answer is that they all began in St. Louis. The ice cream cone was born at the St. Louis World's Fair in 1904, and it was just 100 years earlier that Lewis and Clark began their exploration of the Louisiana Territory, and our new Miss Universe will, of course, begin her reign right here tonight. Who will she be? Well, I can give you a hint. She's either just been interviewed, or she's about to be interviewed by Bob Barker right down there. Bob is going to be back with the rest of our semifinalist interviews, but first, here's a message from Secret, the official antiperspirant of... We have had a chance to meet six of our semi-finalists, and now it's time to talk with the other six, and I am going to start with you, Miss Switzerland. Would you come out to me? She is Lolita Morena, age 22, student at the University of Geneva. A university student studying what? I'm studying Egyptology. Egyptology? Yeah. In reading the classified ads, I see no mention of Egyptologists. Are there, well, what does an Egyptologist do? Okay, do you know what is an archaeologist? An archaeologist, okay, I do. Okay, right. So it's the same thing, but only about Egypt. And so you will uh, end up in only Egypt? I mean, you would not be an archaeologist in other countries? Is that why you... Uh, no, I would like to go only to Egypt um, because it's a marvelous civilization. I think we have a lot to, to learn from that civilization. Indeed we do. Now, I have heard you doing a lot of interpreting here in the last week. How many languages do you speak? I speak five languages. What are they? <laughs> Thank you. That applause was started by five different people who speak different languages. Okay, it's English a little bit, like you can hear, and English French is, is my mother language, Italian, Spanish, and German. You speak German? Yeah. Now, you know, in St. Louis, there are also many, many people of German extraction. Mm -hmm. And would you like, would you like to wind up your interview, would you like to wind up your interview with a tremendous reaction from the audience? Uh, Let yeah. me tell you what to do. Okay. In German, you say, the cardinals are going to take it all. <laughs> uh. Just a moment. The cardinals are, are the next Gavino. There you are. Thank you, Miss Switzerland. <laughs> Dodgers are watching. I'm only kidding up here. You know that. In Spain. Ana Isabel Herrero, age 18, and in your bio it said that you are studying flying and that you want to make aviation your career. Is that right? Right. <laughs> and how long, how, how far along are you in your studies? Have you soloed? I don't speak English. You don't speak English? No. Do you want an interpreter? Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought you spoke English. Yes. Would uh, one of you come out here now? I have Miss Spain. Oh, boy, I'm in trouble now here. <laughs> Hermano is back. Now, ask her if it's true that she wants to study flying and make aviation a career. ¿Es cierto que usted quiere estudiar piloto y hacer de la aviación una carrera? Sí, me gusta mucho la aviación y me gustaría ser instructor de vuelo de, de ultraligeros y avionetas. Uh, yes, I like aviation very much. I would like to be an uh, instructor for, for pilots. And uh, tell her also that I have read in her bio that horseback riding is her hobby. Has, has she seen the famous St. Louis Clydesdales? Ha leído que usted también le gusta montar a caballo. ¿Y ¿Ha oído hablar sobre los famosos Clydesdale de, de San Luis? Sí, sí que los he oído hablar y los he visto. Estuve el otro día viéndolos en la cervecería. Sí, yes, she's heard about it, about them and she's also seen them the other day. What did she think of them? ¿Qué pensó de ellos? Me gustaron mucho. Estaban bastante fuertes. She liked it very much and they were real strong. They are very strong. That's all that beer they drink. Of course, they're strong. Yeah. Thank you very much, Ms. Thank, you. Thank you, sir. You've seen her score, and we'll continue with Miss England, who is Karen Moore, 21, from Portsmouth, a model, and her career ambition is to become a television presenter. Now, I'm a television presenter. I present refrigerators and I present motorcycles, but I'll bet in England, a television presenter is a different thing. Yes, a television presenter is um, similar to, well, it's the same as your job. Um, it involves appearances on television. It uh, involves what? 
appearances on television. Well, as my a... job involves appearances on television. Some people ignore them, but it involves that. Yes, that's right. In England, you would be classed as a television presenter. I think over here you call it um, a personality, television personality, so I'm told. Ah, I see. Now, you are also very, very proud. I understand you're very proud of your Green Beret. Yes, I am indeed. In England, we have... Um, it's a very high honor to have a Green Beret, and I'm one of very few ladies who have it. It involved a year of work all over Europe and most of England, and it's very strenuous work. Not many women do do it, but it was given to me as a challenge, so I'm pleased to have it. What kind of work did you have to do to become a Green Beret? Well, what are some of the things you did? Well, I went to North Norway, and I went up into the field, which is the snow, with rucksacks on my back, and I did training and... With what on your back? Rucksacks. Rucksacks on your <laughs> yes. back? and I did snow skiing, and they taught me to do parachuting and all sorts of things. It was very good training for rehearsals here in St. Louis, wasn't it? Yes, it was indeed. I certainly needed it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Miss England. You will see her score at home, but we do not see it in the theater. We are now going to talk with Miss Finland. Miss Finland is Nina Ricola. She's 20, she's a model. You are a model. But your job as Miss Finland is full-time now, isn't it? Yes, I'm a professional model now in Finland, and I have to travel a lot and meet people and modeling. Now, I'm sure that people here in the United States who are watching us and all over the world, they're curious just what, when you represent your country, what sort of duties do you have? What are your duties? Uh, excuse me, what do you mean? What, is your, what do you do as Miss Finland in representing your country what is your job? What do you do? You go, you inter do interviews? Yes, make sometimes. Appearances? Sometimes, and modeling, and photographs, and something like that. Now, you have a pen pal here, do you not? Yes, I have. Tell our audience about that. She's now here somewhere. I don't know where. But how <laughs> long has she been your pen pal? Uh, 11 years. And how did you two start writing? Uh, it was one magazine in Finland, and I found her name, and I tried to try. And now you've met her here as a result of the pageant. Yes, I think that's times. wonderful. And also, if you young men would like to meet uh, or have a pen pal who looks like Miss Finland, send me your name, your address, and ten dollars. And uh, I'll do what I can for you. Thank you, Miss Finland. And now, Miss USA, would you come out here? She is Julie Hyatt. Miss USA is 22. She lives in La Pinata, which is a suburb of Los Angeles. She's a senior at UCLA, and she's a pre-dental major. And I had the pleasure of crowning you about two months ago, and what have your adventures been since? Oh, boy, I've been traveling throughout the United States. I've already been to seven different cities, and I've worked at Special Olympics since then. And have you spent much time in New York, where I know you're going to live now? I live in New York now, so I have. You have indeed. Now, you are going to become a dentist, and you have rather elaborate plans for your office, I hear. Oh, Why I don't do. you tell me about those? Okay, I have two plans. The first is, I, I'm going to take care of my female clientele by having male dental assistants work for me. Of course. And then my second plan is my dental offices could be in the shape of a horseshoe where I'll have all the chairs facing inward towards a garden where I'll have small animals. All, what kind of animals? Um, probably rabbits, animals that I can take care of in a small garden. And of course, you are going to help control the pet population and have them all spayed or That's neutered. Right. That's right. Yes. Thank will. you, Miss USA. <laughs> Germany is Loanna Radecki. She's 20. She lives in Berlin, and you want an interpreter, don't you? Yes. Would you come help us, please? Uh, would you ask her, what does she do in Berlin? What, what is her job? I'm a legal assistant. What did you get her out here for now, if you're going to speak English with me? I think when I'm nervous, I understand nothing. Well, you understood that, so you must not be nervous. You're a legal uh, secretary? Assistant, yes. Uh, legal assistant. What sort of things do you do? What is, what is your job? Uh, uh, more details about her job. How long is your 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 job? Where are you? Over the machine schreiben. Well, her job mostly consists of typing. I see. Ask her if she's uh, since she's been in the United States if she's seen the Price Is Right. Uh, haben Sie gesehen the Price Is Right? That in the United States. 
Verstehe nicht. I think that was a mistake. I should never have asked that question. I don't. Der er mit wird. Nein. Sorry. Nine is no, isn't it? Tell her that the price is right is one of our cultural. Uh, it's a very important cultural thing. Es ist eine besondere Kulturleistung der Vereinigten Staaten. Das müssen Sie sich unbedingt ansehen. Ich werde es mir beim nächsten Mal sofort ansehen. Uh, next time I'm going to look at it right away. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. competition among our 12 semi-finalists has now been completed. You have seen and heard just what our judges observed. How about it? Does your opinion agree with theirs? Well, either way, there's more competition ahead. And with that in mind, you're going to see a new stepping stone for some young ladies when CBS brings you the first Miss Teen USA pageant live from Lakeland, Florida on Tuesday night, August 30th. And we are most pleased that the mayor of Lakeland, Mr. Frank O'Reilly, is with us tonight. The first of this evening's stepping stones, however, at our pageant for our semifinalists was the interview competition, and our judges have just voted first place to, let me see, Miss Ireland was first place, second place place was Miss Switzerland, and in third place was Miss New Zealand. Now coming up next, a song from one of television's most popular and handsome stars, John Schneider, right after this, from Jim. Judging panels over the past years. This year, that tradition is maintained, and I would like to introduce the judging panel to you right now. This beautiful young woman is now a most successful model and television personality. Miss Universe 1981, Irene Saez. Judge has made that rare transition from rock star to actor and is now an international television favorite after five years on the popular adventure series The Professionals. He is the star of the soon to be released action film The Final Option. He is that fine British actor Lewis Collins. <laughs> Miss swimsuit competition and I'm here to conduct a survey and the subject is nervousness. Now watch. Is there anyone here who is not nervous at this point? You're all nervous, right? Aren't you? Of course you are. Well, this beautiful young woman right here wearing her lovely gown by Akira is an expert on how they feel because she went through it. She's Margaret Gardner, Miss Universe 1978, right? That's correct. And let me know, uh, are these gals nervous, Margaret? Well, of course they are. I was nervous when I left home for the pageant. So you can imagine how it's feeling by the time I got to the semi-finals. I certainly can. What kind of nerves did you have? It's a wonderful kind of nervousness, full of excitement and hope. There's magic in the air. There's more than magic in the air, because also in the air at this pageant is the sound of wedding bells. Our guest star, John Schneider, who was just out there, marries Tony Godin Little next Saturday, and the president of Miss Universe Incorporated, Harold Glasser, will soon be marrying Marnie Goodman. And there's one more set of wedding bells, aren't there, Margaret? We sure are. Andre and I will be married very soon. Are you nervous now? Well, sure I am, but not as nervous as those contestants are. Well, good luck to all the brides like this gorgeous one right here, the bridegrooms and the young ladies behind me who are getting ready for the swimsuit competition coming up right after this word from Scope. We come now to the second of our competitive categories, the swimsuit competition. Our contestants will appear in their swimwear by Catalina, and each judge will enter a score for each contestant into our computer. As each young lady appears on your screens, our audience at home will see the average score attained by that contestant. Our setting, which includes the beautiful dancing waters, recalls one of the most memorable attractions at the 1904 St. Louis World's Fair. Ladies and gentlemen, the Crystal Palace. semi-finalists in the Miss Universe swimsuit competition. Miss New Zealand.
15-year-old Lorraine weighs 124 pounds and is 5 feet 8 and a half inches tall. She has blonde hair and hazel eyes. Miss Italy. Eighteen-year-old Federica is a green-eyed brunette. She weighs 116 pounds and is five feet seven inches tall. Miss Singapore. Five feet six and a half inches tall and she weighs 110 pounds she's 20 years old with black hair and dark brown eyes Miss Venezuela Paula is 21 years old stands five feet seven inches tall and weighs 125 pounds. She has brown eyes and light brown hair. Miss Ireland. Twenty-year-old Roberta is a blue-eyed blonde. She weighs 115 pounds and is five feet, seven inches tall. Miss Norway. Standing five feet, 10 inches tall, Elizabeth weighs 132 pounds. She's 21 years old with blonde hair and blue eyes. Miss Switzerland. Twenty-two-year-old Lolita has green eyes and dark brown hair. She's five feet, eight inches tall, and weighs 110 pounds. Miss Spain. Anna has brown eyes and dark brown hair. She's 18 years old, five feet, six and a half inches tall, and weighs 125 pounds. Miss England. Karen weighs 119 pounds and stands five feet, six inches tall. She has green eyes and blonde hair, and Karen is 21 years old. Miss Finland. Twenty-year-old Nina is a green-eyed blonde. She's five feet, eight and a half inches tall, and weighs 123 pounds. Miss USA. Julie is 22 years old, five feet, 10 inches tall, and weighs 125 pounds. She has blonde hair and green eyes. Miss Germany. Standing six feet, 
tall, Loana weighs 132 pounds. She's 20 years old with blonde hair and brown eyes. There are the 12 semi-finalists in tonight's swimsuit competition. two different groups of people. One group believes that they know which of our young ladies will be the winner tonight, and the other group hasn't quite made... I have to admit that as of right now, they're applauding the swimsuit. Also, <laughs> some of them already know. <laughs> I'm in that second group. But in our swimsuit competition, they did vote. Let me see here. Miss USA was first. Second place was Miss England. And third place went to Miss Switzerland. Now back to Bob, who has a very special musical treat for us. Right, Bob? Last year in Lima, Peru, the Miss Universe pageant had a guest who was making his... <laughs> you remember that I told you earlier that the ice cream cone was born here in St. Louis? Well, so was Ice tea, and so was producer David Merrick, and poet Eugene Field, and playwright T.S. Eliot, and we all know who Yogi Berra was. He was born here, too. Well, to learn even more about this wonderful city, let's take a trip with a beautiful guide, our reigning Miss Universe, Karen Baldwin. For more than 200 years of its existence, one word has been a consistent factor in the growth of St. Louis, transportation. This city was built on the mighty Mississippi, where boats from the north and south met trains from the east and west to supply the needs of a growing nation. And a great city grew up here. It is the home of some of the giant firms of American industry leaders in the production of many things, from footwear and beer to chemicals and grain products, and of course, transportation. It was a group of St. Louis businessmen who financed the construction of an airplane named the Spirit of St. Louis, in which a 25-year-old Charles Lindbergh captured the imagination of the world by being the very first to fly the Atlantic Ocean alone. The Spirit of St. Louis flew at approximately 125 miles per hour. If you think that was a miracle, how would you describe the Spirit here at McDonnell Douglas, where they built aircraft that can travel at 1,500 miles per hour, and airplanes called Harriers that can take off and land vertically like a helicopter? fly from coast to coast at two and a half times the speed of sound and you have a few extra dollars left over from your paycheck this week then this form of transportation is definitely for you but by the way batteries aren't included of course if your travel plans are a little more modest you may prefer to drive and again st louis can play a big part it is second only to detroit in automotive production people have traveled in and out of St. Louis, but so too of culture and the arts. Music, for example. Some of it has traveled across oceans to be a part of the St. Louis Symphony Orchestra, which is second oldest in the country and located here at Powell Hall. And some of it came up the river to make St. Louis a vital source of what came to be known as jazz. And tonight, St. Louis is a starting point of a new kind of transportation. The magic carpet journey of a new Miss Universe. And now it's time to go back where all that will happen. Joan? Thank you, Karen. And back we are, where another magic carpet made a stop in St. Louis last October. And this pageant didn't forget, as Bob will tell us. That's right. A young woman will receive the coveted title of Miss Universe. Last October 20th in St. Louis, another title was won when the city's beloved baseball team, the St. Louis Cardinals, won the world championship. That victory, 
That victory brought pride and happiness to everyone here, as you can well see, and especially to two gentlemen who are with us tonight and whom we would like to thank for the great hospitality we've been shown here. The mayor of St. Louis, the Honorable Vincent Shamo, and the county executive, Gene McNary. Tonight, our contestants, along with the National Cheerleaders Association and our special guest, John Schneider, salute baseball and its reigning champions. All right, ladies, take us out to the ball game. Start at the top, you're certain to drop. You gotta watch your timing. Better begin by climbing. Up, up, up the ladder. If you're going to last, you can't make it fast, gang. Nobody starts a winner. Give me a small beginner. Easy does it, my friend. Conserve your fine endurance. Easy does it, my friend. For that's the life insurance. Yeah. 